Welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial. In today's video, we're going to take a look at remote events and how you can use those in your game. There's different ways you can use remote events. You can either go from the client to the server, you can go from the server to a particular client, or you can go from the server to all of the clients. What we're going to focus on in today's video is going from the client side to the server side. And what we're going to do is we have a button on the client side. And when the player clicks this part, it's going to create a part on the server side so that everybody can see it. What I'm going to do first, though, is show you an example where it doesn't have remote events and it's just on the local side. And I'll show you what happens. In this case, where everything runs on the client side, what we have is a function that runs every time the player clicks the button and it creates a new part. But when you actually run your game, it's going to look something like this. Okay, so let's assume you're in a game with a couple people in it and one of the clients clicks on the part button then what's going to happen is it only spawns a part on that client's side. Over here on the other side, the other people can't see that part. And the same happens for the other people. If they click on the part button, it creates a part, but only that particular person sees it. All right, let's go ahead and dive in and see how we can do this in Roblox Studio. Okay, so what we want to do in this video is use remote events so that whenever the player clicks on the button, it sends something from the client side to the server and on the server side that's where it creates the part and that way everybody can see that part. So what we need to do to make this work is we need to add a GUI button on the screen for the player to click and you can do that by going under starter GUI adding a screen GUI and then under the screen GUI you want to add a text button. There's a lot of different options under the text button and you can customize it to whatever you want. Under the text button, we're going to be adding a local script. Inside of the local script, the first thing we're doing is creating a reference for this text button. Next, we're creating a variable as a reference for the replicated storage. And the reason we're doing that, inside of the replicated storage is where we're going to be adding our remote event. So what you can do to add that is just click on it, click on the plus sign, and then select remote event. The reason we're putting it in replicated storage is this is an area where both the client and the server can access this remote event. After that, we're creating another variable for the remote event itself. For this function here, all it's doing is firing the remote event whenever that button gets clicked by the user. The reason we're doing this is because we can write a script on the server side that says whenever I notice that this event got fired, then I can run some code. So it's just a way of communicating from the client side to the server side. So the client is firing the remote event, and then the server side is waiting for that event, and then it'll do some code. Okay, so now that we got the client side handled, we can write a script on the server side. And so this is going to be a script that's going to go under server script service. What the script is doing is creating a reference for the replicated storage, and also the remote event, just like we had before. What this line down here does is whenever that remote event gets fired from the client side, it's going to run this function right here. And what this function does, it creates a new part inside of the game. So quickly, just to go through things again, on the client side, the player will click the button. When they click the button, that'll fire the remote event. And then on the server side, whenever it notices that that remote event got fired, it'll run this function here, which creates the new part. Okay, so let's take a look at this one in action so we can compare the difference between just the client side and the version where it uses remote events. Okay, so now if you're in a game with a couple players and you're using remote events, whenever one of the players clicks on the part button, it creates a part that appears on both players' screen. And that works for both players, so if I do it on this side, it does the same thing where it creates a part that appears on both screens. This is going to be the end of this video. In the next one, we're going to take a look at more remote events, and this time we're going to go from the server side to a particular client. I hope you enjoyed, and stay tuned for the next one.